I made a video about this little $35 laptop. Nothing special, just a cheap Celeron powered machine that somehow still worked fine. So after this I ended up giving it to my cousin to use as a replacement for his old iPad and it did the job for about a month until I got a message saying that it wasn't turning on properly. So when I finally got it back, I realised why. So let me just go ahead and show you guys. First, take a look at that. The display has been completely shuttered. Now the laptop itself still powered on and as you can see works perfectly fine. You just can't see anything on the screen. So today we're doing exactly what the title says. We're going to turn this thing into a headless laptop. It's powered by an Intel Celeron N3050 with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of eMMC storage. Now it's not exactly a powerhouse but it's definitely still usable so rather than replacing the display by buying you know a new display that's probably more expensive than the laptop itself I figured I'd see what else I could do with it. So today I'm going to take it apart, remove the screen entirely and see if I can keep this thing running as a compact little desktop setup. I'm going to try and turn this thing into a headless laptop. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is shut down the laptop completely. So it should be as simple as doing this. Alright, and let's flip the laptop over. So let's go ahead and remove the screws off the laptop now that we've got it flipped over. screw so let's go ahead and get that out and there we go all right now let's flip the laptop over and these screws should just come out like that all right now let's go ahead and open up the laptop now let me just um, put out a little reminder there that this laptop has nothing surprising or anything interesting in its internals I can assure you every single part of this laptop is soldered from the storage to the RAM to pretty much everything else Surprisingly, the only thing that's actually upgradable in these types of laptops is the battery. So let's go ahead and open up the laptop and we should just be able to pop the keyboard off, the uh, keyboard base thing. And there we go. So a lot easier than uh, the HP laptop. you got to use a lot of uh, force with that. Let me just go ahead and close the lid because we've already got the main thing off. Here we are. So yeah, once again, it's literally just e-waste. There's absolutely nothing special in this. <laughs> For some reason, the battery's just fluffing around. I've gone ahead and already done a mini investigation with these internals, and um, my oh my, is this thing just straight e-waste. So I mean, as you can see, there is this tiny little uh, compartment here. You're probably wondering why it's just empty. But you see, there's supposed to be a slot here for a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD. But as you can see, there's literally no like SATA cable or anything like that. Here's a cool little discovery though. As you can see, there's actually solder pads for a SATA port. I honestly not discovered the types of models there are with this laptop, but there definitely was a model that was like similar to this build that supported 2.5 inch drives. So yeah, that's a cool little discovery. Back to what we were supposed to do, we need to remove the display. The display seems to be attached onto the case by these two screws here. So let's go ahead and get them removed. So let's go ahead and get these out. Okay, that's the first screw. Let's get the second one out. Alright, and let's go ahead and do the same for the other side. Alright, well I might be one of the world's worst technicians. Um, I completely forgot to remove the battery. Right, well, let's go ahead and do that before I probably get zapped or damage the system. And here's the e-waste battery. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the lid up. And... There we go. So we got the main display system out. So I've gone ahead and already checked out the board a bit just to make sure that, you know, the cables that were disconnecting are in fact disconnectable. So it seems that the main display is controlled by this little ribbon cable here. This is what actually shows what's on the screen from the motherboard. And then this seems to be the power for the display. But here's the thing, here's the network card. And as we can see, we've got two cables here. There's a black one and a white one, and they seem to go to the display itself. So it seems to be using what I think is the display as the actual like antenna for the laptop. 
and I don't think we can disconnect them. But let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and try and open up the display. And like, no joke, we're actually going to have to open up the display to see where the actual antennas are being placed. And then let's see if we can remove them from the display and just tuck it into the laptop itself somehow. So it seems that the cables are soldered to this thing here, the actual antennas. I don't think we're going to be able to remove the antennas. They seem to be soldered to this thing here at the top of the display. So um, I guess we're just not going to be able to run a stable Wi-Fi connection. But thankfully this thing, not only does it have HDMI, but it's also got Ethernet, as we can see here. So I mean, yeah, let's just go ahead and disconnect everything from this. First up, we've got the Wi-Fi cables that we've got to disconnect. And then along with that, we've got the display power. Let's disconnect that as well. Uh, it's being really stubborn right now for some reason. I don't want to pick it out with my nails because that might be a bit dangerous. Alright, there we go. Oh ha, huh, I'm mistaken. Um, this was for the charging port. But we had to disconnect it anyway. It was actually lying on top of the Wi-Fi cables anyway, so... And let's remove the ribbon cable. There we go. So with that, the display should just come out like this. And we should just be able to reattach the back piece like normal. So let's go ahead and do that once I get this power cable installed. Alright, nice. Now let's go ahead and install the battery. There we go. Alright, and for the all right, and for the final bit, let's put the back plate on. And that should have done it. Alright, now let's go ahead and screw that back down. Okay, so I've gone ahead and screwed up everything, and I think we should be good to go with this. So let's flip the laptop around, and here's what we got. So everything should just work perfectly fine with the trackpad and even the keyboard. So I think it's time we get this thing set up. Alright, so it's time to turn this thing on. Let's go ahead and press the power button on the keyboard. And let's see if we get anything out of this. And hey, would you look at that? We've got a fully working system. Nice. And would you look at that? We're logged in and the system actually does fully work. And it does seem to be driving the four... 1080p display that we've got here. Let's take a look. And yup, it's 1080p. And like I mentioned before, our trackpad and our keyboard still works perfectly fine with this. Now, of course, like I've mentioned before, devices like these with 32 gigabytes of storage don't really work great anymore with old Windows versions, and you can't really get new Windows versions on there. Simply just because of how small the storage is on this, just take a look at that. You've only got 1.23 gigabytes left. I'm not really going to be installing Linux on this thing, in fact I'll probably just ditch the laptop later on. But if you've got a device like this that you want to put some use into, just install Linux on it and you'll be good to go. Something lightweight like Tiny Core Linux should be just fine for this. So I think this is the greatest way to end this video off. We've literally converted a laptop to a desktop. So if you liked what you saw, then definitely consider liking the video and subscribing. Feel free to join the Discord server too, I'll leave that in the description below. And so I'll see you guys in my next video.